Crab flies are a lot of fun to make, but require certain features to be successful. Proper fall, decent crawl in the water, and a nice profile among others. Crab shell is an important part of this, and so this video shows you how to tie a crab shell with consistent proportions, a variety of shapes, and a professional appearance. This pattern in particular uses an Enrico Puglisi dubbing brush for the body and has been given eyes and claws which you can design on your own patterns. To begin with, tie in your dubbing brush, wrapping as close to the claws as possible, then wrap forward with your thread. Fold a single rubber leg over the thread and move it to the top of the hook. Lash it down and adjust each side with poles and thread wraps. I do want the rubber legs to be on the sides, but more on top as well, which will actually be down when the pattern is in the water. Wrap forward a bit and repeat the process with a second rubber leg. When you're done with this, you should end with your thread at the weighted eyes. You need to move these rubber legs out of the way, so collect them all together and either put one wrap of thread around them or use hackle pliers to hold them, like I do here. You're now ready to wrap the dubbing brush forward just like Chanel. I'm careful to wrap as close to the claws as possible so that I can leave a little bit of the fibers hanging over to give the appearance of a shell close to the eyes. After this, just wrap forwards to the first rubber leg, making sure to fold the fibers back with each wrap. At this point, place the dubbing brush to the rear. I use a clip to provide weight and to secure it there. Now take the two ends of the first rubber leg in your hands and attach them to the hackle pliers again, but this time they need to go back. After this is done, hold the remaining rubber legs in front and wrap forward once or twice with the dubbing brush until you are flush with the remaining rubber legs. Then wrap in front of the rubber legs once or twice. Pull the thread through the dubbing, which can be a little tricky, and secure the dubbing brush down with four or five wraps of thread. Now cut the wire as close as possible with a cheap pair of scissors or wire cutters. I prefer this to wiggling the wire until it breaks. Now you just need to give it a few thread wraps, whip finish, and cut the thread. Just release the rubber legs from the hackle pliers and position them to the sides. The tying portion of this fly is now done. Before you cut, you need to give your fly a nice hair combing. First, to get the fibers straight out, and second, to part the hair and position the fibers to each side. Now the cutting begins. Start cutting the fly as close as you can to the hook shank, beginning at the weighted eyes. You're trying to stay just around the middle of the fly to preserve the fibers going to the sides. Also, clear up the area by the eyes and claws. The top, eventually the bottom, can be cut closer here. Next, take off four rubber leg ends and bring them to the top, that is, the place where we tied them on. 
use the hackle pliers again to allow the rubber legs to dangle down below as we turn the fly upside down. Now do your best hairdresser impression and comb your fly's hair just like on the first side. The cuts are going to be the same and I really try to make the cuts that are right over the hook shank very close since this will clear out the gape of the hook. But leave some overhang toward the back. Here is the most critical part of the whole fly. This is a piece of stiff paper from a cereal box in the shape of a crab shell that I've pre-made with a little slit in the top that fits onto the hook. You can see how to make this from the link below. Position the paper on top with a slit on the hook and begin to cut using curved scissors if at all possible. Simply cut around the template, making sure not to shuffle it. Then switch your fingers around so you can cut the other side. I put my thumb on the bottom of the fly to smash the fibers up. It doesn't matter if you have some errant fibers since you will touch up the fly anyway. Once you've finished making the main cuts with the curved scissors, you can bring in your straight blade scissors to thin out the shell and get any fibers that are poking up. Finally, release and cut your rubber legs to size and this is your finished fly. Don't forget that this is simply an example to use with different fibers, colors, and shapes of your choice. If you like this video, take a look at our new site to flyfish.com and the article that shows you how to make these crab shell templates. And subscribe here or below to see new videos for all types of fish, techniques, and fly patterns.